is someone talking about Cloudflare? Vercel, that easy mode button to deploy any Trello clone with zero users on the internet. Now I've been using Vercel for years. It's easy enough to just hand them your GitHub, point to a repository, and let it figure out how to build your terrible TypeScript to something deployable. But I also know all those projects are throwaways. I'm not trying to scale it to a bajillion users, and I'm not connecting in other services, because Vercel is mostly just a subset of the cloud that's growing a little bit, but you still don't have access to event pipelines, or retries, or dead letter queues, or waiting in a queue for 30 minutes to mail a letter with a prepaid label. Why USPS? I just want the cloud with no headaches. I think of Vercel like Trader Joe's. We all know that they're just repackaging other goods with a fancy brand, the same way Vercel has Vercel DB which is Neon yeah. Database, or Vercel KV, which is just Upstash, yeah. even Vercel Serverless, which is yeah. just AWS. But when you walk in that Trader Joe's and you see all those cashiers with smiling faces, checking people out, ringing bells for assistance, and then you walk down the aisles of perfectly packaged frozen foods and the snacks that are beautifully salted and toasted. For okay, now I need my cashiers. It's really that mountain developer experience that really makes you feel special. But if you're gonna call skill issue and tell me I gotta deploy to the first party cloud solutions, we need to make it just as easy and as cool to host on those services. And I need it to be worth my while for the feature set. Like I need that whole suite of services. So alongside our Vercel, we need our Costco and I think Cloudflare's building it. Now, let's whiteboard this. Now, first Cloudflare was this kind of specialized network. So normally, when you're hosting an app, you might put it on US East. So then all the visitors in Virginia are like, wow, this is fast. But then you have all the soccer players in Brazil that are like, this should not be a, a goal. So that's when you start deploying to multiple regions, so you don't have to have that round trip cost anymore. This is more important with GDPR, where you need to have different data centers depending on your customer. To route traffic to those data centers, you need a traffic guard of the web. And that is what Cloudflare does. They have this content delivery network, or CDN, that connects a bunch of little nodes around the world. It has a fairly small payload size, so you're putting very specialized bits of code around everywhere that you need it. For example, Proxies. So if you have a German visitor that comes along and says, can I visit the website? Okay, that was French. You can put a proxy in front of your app that directs their traffic to the European database. Then an American comes along and says, hey partner, can I visit your database? And that request goes through the proxy to direct them to the North America database. But then people started wondering, okay, I can put these little chicken nuggets of code around the globe, but can I stuff a full Thanksgiving turkey of a web app in there? The answer was supposed to be no, but then Cloudflare said, sure, why not? So they started building all these services that go around those proxies we were talking about. So you start with what's called a worker, which is just a request response function, kind of like a serverless function that you can distribute around. And it runs on a lighter weight node runtime so that it can start up quickly. And it's called worker D. Okay, don't, don't leave the comment. Don't, you're leaving the comment. Then you have equivalents for other web app stuff that's distributed, like D1 database, which is just SQLite distributed. R2, which is asset storage distributed. And there's even like event pipelines and queues, which again, distributed. And whenever you write to that storage, it distributes the info around bling, bling, bling. to get everyone eventually consistent. So with all these services, Cloudflare is more than a subset of the cloud. They're kind of the whole cloud everywhere. Cloud everywhere. Cloud where? Cloud flare. Cloud flare? Please, Please clap. clap. So like Costco, you got a pantry full of solutions. But it's not like AWS where you have server or serverless. It's just one set of services, that $5 oh. rotisserie chicken that you can rely on. I think it's time to try the bleeding edge. All right, this is Ben at the desk. You can tell it's a new segment because 
different classes. We're gonna be trying out Cloudflare in an actual framework project. I'm gonna be using Astro for this, but they have starters for Remix and Nuxt as well that you can go try. I just prefer the Astro one because, to be honest, I know the maintainer, and he's an absolute legend that has pushed this thing to V10, they've made the dev experience better than ever in this version, and it's super easy to install. You just run Astro add Cloudflare, in an existing Astro project. I have one here. We're gonna be demoing a soundboard Whoa. generator. So somewhere that you can upload silly sounds, hit play whenever a moment strikes you. So we're gonna run Astro add Cloudflare and this will first install all the dependencies. I'll hit no because I already have them installed and it will update your config for you. And we're also gonna add a little setting to make our dev server even nicer. We're gonna add this platform proxy option. This is going to take the whole Cloudflare runtime and all their services available for asset uploads, databases, etc., and make them available in development without even connecting to Cloudflare with an API key. Now, yes, that does mean if you hit a problem in development, you might not see it in production for certain dependencies. It's going to take a whole engine swap to support the Cloudflare runtime in development, but they are working on it, so get ready for that. For now, we're just gonna proxy everything in to our dev server. We're also gonna set up a wrangler.toml file. This lets you wrangle all the Cloudflare dependencies into your project. And for us, we're just gonna be using R2 for asset uploads because we want to back up all your audio files into a storage container. So all you have to do is say R2 buckets, the binding you want, and the name. I'm gonna say WAMP audio but you can name it whatever you want super easy to just go on your cloudflare dashboard and make a new bucket with all of that set up you can run the dev command and this will first generate types based on this wrangler file so that you get access to r2 for example and also some secrets that i have set for authentication we head over to our dev server when you're signed in we can select files to upload and right now, we're backing up all the audio files in a database. We're not gonna be using Cloudflare for that. We're actually using Astro's own built-in storage because selfishly, I built this storage solution and I think it's awesome. So you should probably use it too. You can also use Cloudflare for a database, but we're gonna be using Astro for that piece of the puzzle. But for the audio files, we're gonna be using the Cloudflare runtime. You can see we take in that request, we look at all those audio files that we uploaded, we generate a name based on the name of the audio file, and we're gonna do two things. We're gonna keep track in the database of that audio file name, and we're also gonna put that into Cloudflare. And you have access to the whole Cloudflare environment on this little asher.locals. So inside of here we have the Cloudflare runtime, and you can access the R2 bucket, and all you have to call is dot .put. So you can put the key, and await audio file dot array buffer. This is gonna flatten that whole file into one big buffered pancake and put that into your bucket. So if we had select files on here, we can see all of my whiteboard the web sounds. We're gonna put the heavenly awe. And you can see right there, we have the audio name. We have a little emoji that's generated and you can choose whichever one you want. And the interesting part is where this audio file is living. If I actually head to my dev folder right here, we have this fun dot wrangler directory. And inside of state, you can see the R2 bucket, WAP audio, and then all the file blobs that I've been working with. I had a couple that I was testing with earlier, but you can see right here are all of the audio uploads. And let me add another one to really color that in. If I added the boom into this guy, you can head over here and boom, new audio blob appears. No need to set up a dev and prod environment and connect to them with API keys. You can just mock it all locally, delete the directory, create a new one, whatever you want to do, you're free to play with R2 on your machine. Now, the next part is getting this audio to play. Right now, it's not able to request it back out of our backend, so we're gonna expose a little endpoint. I'm gonna create an audio slash key right in here. If you've used Next.js Pages Router, you know this convention. And we're going to define an API route inside of here. This gives you access to the whole Cloudflare runtime and return as a REST handler. So we have access to the key and we have access to R2. We can say await context locals runtime, and then we'll get it out of there based on the key name. We'll also add in a couple extra details here. First, if we don't find the audio file, return a 404. And we're also gonna set this little E tag header to make sure all the content types are correct. If you've used AWS, 
S3 has a very similar convention. Lastly, we just return a web standard response. Now, if we want to play these files, we need to use the web standard audio API to go grab that audio file and play it. So now if I hit this, oh. we hear our beautifully heavenly aw. Finally, you're gonna to wanna to deploy it to production. Cloudflare Pages is your equivalent to Vercel for serverless hosting. So you can connect your GitHub repo the same way you do in a Vercel account. And once you're on the internet, it's just gonna be at .pages.dev. I already have some audio files persisted, obviously. And those should play much the same way. Now, I said I would include the bad in this video as well, and there are a couple warts to mention. First off, I did have to enable their Node.js compatibility mode in order to get React rendering properly. So if you run into that issue, know that you can add these little compatibility flags for that to work. But it did take a while to figure that out. Also hit some hiccups with deploying server side with Astro, but working with the maintainer in order to figure out how to get that smooth again. Lastly, I'll say it again, the dev and production experiences are different here. We're using full Node.js in development so we can use our favorite build tool, Vite. But when we deploy to production, we're going to be using Cloudflare's stripped down runtime. So you might hit some issues that work fine in dev, but have some deployment issues. Now, don't worry, they're aware of this on the Cloudflare team and on the Vite team as well. Patak, an amazing developer on Vite, is working on a runtime API so Vite can plug into things other than Node.js. So we could get the full production version of Cloudflare in your dev server. I have high hopes for getting Cloudflare to be the streamlined experience everywhere. And know if you're watching this, you're a hacker. You have side projects. Install the Cloudflare integration. You can add it to Astro with Astro Add Cloudflare. And if you enjoyed the content, like subscribe. More videos coming soon. I'll see you in the next one.